Okay, it's great. The camera froze after I talk for 10 minutes. Uh, uh, okay, so the, the final project. So as uh, part of the training, um, there are 40, I don't know, 43 uh, very data technology savvy people here in the room. So let's do something cool. Um, let's try to solve a real problem into in one day. <laughs> um, so the ask uh, was, what is an issue that an organization or a campaign is facing uh, now? And um, if you're to solve it, how you solve it? What do you need to find out? And uh, things like that. So um, everyone was like, uh, I, I don't know. Because um, we learn all these great skills and we're going to use it. But we're going to use like different aspects of our work. And it doesn't necessarily like, come together in a big project. And if it does come into a big project, most of it already is implemented. Why would we be waiting until this training to get it done? So it's like 60% done or like 80% done. When it's like 60% done, there's like already protocols and stuff. And it takes longer to for the person in charge to explain that to um the participants than to get it done because we need to hopefully square from scratch. Uh, I guess they mentioned that, but I think that's the understanding. So I don't know for KRC, we are a budget campaign, so I don't know who's likely to support or balance a fair budget and taxes. Um, maybe I don't know if people are interested. Uh, it's kind of uh, kind of random. Uh, I don't know, it could be immigration reform again. Uh, I don't know. Maybe immigration reform. No, no, maybe not. So, um, uh, so this is how it works. Um, and we split into eight teams. Uh, each team would uh, have a discussion and propose to the entire group. Okay, let's let's do a project on this. And it was one of their projects. It could be uh, their own interest. Like, oh, look, my group has this issue. Let's work on this. Um, so each each group did uh, did the brainstorming and proposed. Uh, and after they proposed, we would all vote on it. And whichever group project got the most votes would get selected. And once the project gets selected, each team uh, separately works on that. Uh, uh, project. So at the end we would have eight projects or eight like solutions to the issue. Um, so yeah. Uh, so there wasn't a whole lot of competition and some people were not that excited but we did got eight projects and there's some interesting ones um, and it's kind of funny because the three that made it to the top three including ours all had pictures in it. And the one with the best uh, branding or, or best uh, presentation, regardless of actually how interesting the content was, actually won. So it's kind of strange. Um, so um, uh, there was group uh, seven or eight, I don't remember, seven, that had this, oh, it's not this one. Oh, it's the only interesting one. There's one that I used a PowerPoint, but it was just like bullet points. But um, there's this uh, team that called our campaign. Uh, they were saying, oh, let's uh, address the undercount and do some research and find out why it's happening, how can we change it, and so forth. Um, and uh, and they were like, oh, undercount? Sounds like underdog. I guess that was the process. So we'll call it undercount dog. No, underdog count. Um, and that became their mascot. And apparently someone even drew a Photoshop around it. Uh, it was group three. No, group two. No, which group is it? Yes, group, no, not two. Group one. Oh. Um, and everyone loved it. And um, I'm trying to find it. I think it's Team Six. Yes, Team Six. So this is what they approached us with. Uh, this is the um, this is the under oh, under vote dog under vote dog, um, and it's gonna solve the issue of under voting. And um, it's kind of 
heard of the word under vote uh, before today. Uh, I wasn't aware of it. And apparently it's this uh, phenomenon through which there's a very hot uh, race, such as Obama, 2008. Uh, people who normally don't, don't vote show up to vote. And then they, you know, they mark Obama, and that's it. Uh, they go home, <laughs> and they don't want anything else of the like 30 other issues that are there, including propositions, state races, and so forth, local races, and so forth. Um, and um, a lot of like proposition campaigns that are hoping for the president's uh, race to attract voters, their supporters, and turn out their base, or hoping to, um, you know liven up their state races are very sorely disappointed. I guess some of that. I think in 2008 there was definitely an expectation on Prop 8. Um, I think not a whole lot. And um, yeah, so if any of these voters, we, they could be uh, encouraged to vote at least in a few more races, that could become a, a pretty big boost in um, uh, per race or per uh, proposition uh, 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 campaign or vote. Now, the presentation is it's like oh, it's an interesting intellectual issue. I don't know. Sounds like because it's so research heavy, and there's no like I don't know. It's so research heavy, um, but people love the dog, and they all remember it. Now, um, the other campaign that made it to top two, uh, the party, and had this logo, and um, I think it's prop from Prop 8. It's using the word 8. Yeah, that's definitely Prop 8. And um, yeah, so people did remember this one too because um, it was, uh, uh, there are two issues in this. Uh, there's, there's a logo. And then uh, people, uh, the person who was presenting this may sound very interesting. Uh, they said, oh, you know, this is very real. People are planning about it right now, and we kind of make a like real contribution the campaign. So I was like, oh, OK. And then um, we had us. Uh, where is my uh, group five? We made it to the top three. I think no one cares about me top three, but uh, ours was, um, oh look, there's restricting coming up, and after that our district is going to change, so uh, don't you want to like win the new district that comes out of that? So a uh, current incumbent candidate, you should hire us, and we know, we'll analyze the situation and propose a campaign to win for you. So in that one, uh, we did it spoken like everyone else, but we included a little image at the end. The little image was um, the last, the current district lines were superimposed over uh, the proposed district lines as of July 19th. That's uh, the yellow lines and the red lines are the current district lines. So um, and it's funny because we did these uh, three rounds and uh, yeah, the, the ones with the picture survey. And the dog won. I, I wish we had worked on the hate campaign, but uh, no hate campaign. Uh, oh well. Um, so now each team has to uh, uh, develop a plan um, around the campaign. So um, we try to be efficient and we split our. Uh, we have an hour and a half today, tonight, and uh, we will have like six more hours on Friday, not on Thursday. Because Thursday there's another training tomorrow, and there's another training, and there's an outing in the afternoon. And people would rather, I mean, after work, like doing these trainings and working from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day, they would rather not work. I, I, I don't want to work <laughs> after 10 p.m. Um, there's other kinds of work I need to do anyway, like writing emails and so forth. So um, uh, we split, uh, we did a general timeline of what we need to do. Well, we should first um, maybe come up with a hypothesis first and try to find the evidence supporting that and then do the data research and then pull it together and do the presentation. And uh, since we are very time time constrained, uh, towards the middle of the discussion, we agreed, okay, we should we should carry out all this uh, sequentially, uh, parallel and parallel. Normally, you first do the research, then uh, look at the data, then draw conclusions, then write a report, 
they make a presentation. But we decided to do all these things at the same time because there's so little time. Um, we'll just write it first, uh, assuming our process is correct, and then make the changes later. Um, and I think it should work that way. Um, so we split into like small time sections and we spent 15 minutes doing the initial research because um, you know I we, I think the other people knew about the issue. I didn't know about the issue at all, so I got a little briefing and then some reading around it, and um, and then had a brainstorming around for 15 minutes about what um, what kinds of data could point a hint at the solution of this issue, and. Um, uh, oh, uh, and then where to find the data. So the 15 minutes became 45 minutes for this part, but that was fine. Um, and the conclusion was a little bit um, uh, disappointing because we spent so much in discussing it, but at the end it came down to income, race, uh, gender, uh, what else, uh, some other factors. I think maybe we might look at DPI and then private registration. Um, I don't remember. Um, so very basic data uh, is available to census and through our scoring system. And um, yeah, so we split uh, off the tasks. One person will start writing the report right away. One person starts developing a presentation. Another person is looking at which race we should be comparing the two to um, do our data comparison. And I think there's three of us pulling data uh, over the next hour or so of of like training time. Um, I'm going to be looking at the census 2009 ACS five year estimate. Another person will be looking at the 2010. Uh, I don't know if we're confident around the 2010. The two the 2000 not that confident, but at least I know where to go click. And another person has access to like their own campaign data, so. So you're going to ask their um, director and so forth. They can use any resources. It was a little bit of a bummer that uh, we couldn't use local data um, because we, throughout the training, we were only given San Diego's uh, two district congressional information. And it was good as a practice, but this project, we want to, I mean, we want to maximize our capacity and uh, we want to like you know bring up everything we know, political data, anecdotal data, field experience, and so forth. And no one is from San Diego in our team. And there's like from the crowd of like 40 people, there were like three San Diego people. So um, uh, it would have been great if each team had chosen their own area. So for example, I don't know, uh, some of the folks were from Ohio, so maybe Ohio or um, you know LA, data, so that the data and the regions make sense to us. And if you find something weird in a precinct, we can point out, oh look, that's because there are a bunch of Korean seniors here, not because of gender or whatever. Um, that's probably the primary driving reason why you see an anomaly. We can interpret it much more uh, quickly without having to go through the whole thing. But um, uh, yeah, that's too bad. So we look like parachuted uh, uh, field staffers. But um, yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. We're going to look at the data, come up, uh, bring up the data. Now, a, a big a big worry is um, uh, the election information is the pricing level. Now, the census, I think um, the 2000 census is available at the census block level, which is great, which is the smallest group. And um, if you get lucky, you might get census block group uh, level data. I don't know which one is available at that level. And then uh, the 2010 census, I think, is at the census track level or census block group? I, I don't remember. And uh, I looked at the 2009 ACS five year estimates and it's only available the census tract. The problem with census tract is it's about the same size as a precinct. So if you're lucky, you might. No, no, it's not going to happen. But if it coincides with a precinct, then we don't need to do any work uh, to compare with the precinct data. If it doesn't coincide, and there are like major uh, differences in how the lines are aligned, then we're in trouble. I don't know how we're going to solve that. Uh, average out, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find something. Um, 
if uh, where coincide. If they don't coincide by a little bit, we just can Ayn Rand use it. So we'll see how it turns out.